Yo, hey everybody, Joey Mesa here. I've been building wheels uh, professionally as a bicycle mechanic pretty much for nearly 40 years now. Uh, so anyway, I've come up with this little exercise that I think would be helpful to a novice first time builder looking to build their first wheel up to anybody that's even an experienced bike mechanic looking to become looking to increase their efficiency at the shop building wheels quicker in a more efficient manner so anyway i've got a this little demo wheel here that we're going to use as an experiment so yeah let's just jump right into it the gist of this uh, exercise is basically you're going to want to have a wheel that's um, that can be torn apart rebuilt practiced with uh, so this is the wheel that i uh, did the had the tacoed wheel and demonstrated how to do that and it's it, it's fairly straight but this is a wheel that's basically I'm not going to use for anything so we're just going to basically tear this back down um, but if you look closely at it you'll see that I've made a few changes to it here I pulled the decals off and then I put some markings um, on the wheel just to try to make sense of a few things so let's just take a little closer look at it here on the uh, the head of the spoke nipple there um, I basically color coded them like all of them on this side are going to be all the heads are green they're going to be red on that side we spin this uh, spin it around they're white or white on the inside there and then yellow here on the drive side or the what you could call the right side and then I don't know if you can see that but as far as the uh, back there on the rim you can see where I've basically colored or painted around the, the nipple area the spoke that leads to that area so we'll get into why the what's and why's of all that here in just a minute but kind of a few key aspects before we get into tearing this wheel down if we look carefully at the wheel before we get started here I'm going to just put this wrench in here where the uh, the valve stem hole is going to be. So you can learn a lot just from looking at a wheel that's built correctly. Just kind of first things first, we always kind of want to know where the position of what, what you would call the key spoke, which is this spoke here that's just to the left of the valve stem hole. And this one, it's one of the yellow, got the little yellow head there, that's the end of it. And then I've got yellow corresponding here where it attaches to the rim. So that's going to be the first spoke that we start with when we're lacing the wheel. So I, I'm just kind of showing you this to you kind of see the proximity of where it is uh, when you start, as well as just the, the or, overall configuration of how, how this reacts to the other spokes around it. Um, so, you know, one thing we can look at, well, we've got these, these four different colors, and if we, let's just start here and then we'll just kind of backtrack counterclockwise. You can see I've got a, um, the yellow, white, red, and then green. And then that pattern is just going to repeat yellow, red, yellow, white, red, green. And so if we just take, look at each group of these in clusters of four, uh, you can see I've got these two spokes here that are on the, uh, the, the right side of the wheel or what they would call the drive side. I'm just going to refer to them as left side or right side. Uh, so this particular wheel is a, we got our drive side here obviously, and then on the, uh, the non-drive or the left side, this one's going to be a disc brake. Uh, so your disc brake rotor attaches here. So the method I use for lacing a disc brake wheel is going to differ from just a standard rim brake wheel and it's also going to differ disc brake wheels front to rear are going to we're going to use a slightly different pattern so try not to add too much confusion here early on but it's uh, you know I've seen a lot of tutorials and books and things and a lot of this they don't really cover they just kind of go into you know start with sticking this spoke in this hole and then you just kind of go from there it's a 32 spoke wheel it's a three cross pattern so you can see that's where it starts so it's going to cross over one two and then eventually this spoke 
And so and then from there the spoke just goes all the way back up to the rim. Just depending on the wheel, the number of spokes, flange size of the hub flange, you know, you can do one cross, two cross, three cross, four cross. You can do radials if it's a, a front wheel. But, you know, anything where there's going to be any kind of torque, like so, say your drive on the wheel, you know, it's going to want to twist the hub this way, you know, where the rim's going to react to that and be pulled along. So that's why you need these spokes that cross to be able to take that torsional pull there. And then it's the same thing with the disc brake there. If it's a front disc, you can't radial ace it, or what happens you hit the brakes and that hub tries to stop and the wheel keeps spinning, you've got to have some kind of a spoke to, to basically support that torsional pull there. If we look correct, you know, closely at this wheel, in my opinion, this is going to be the correct uh, basic lacing pattern for a rear wheel with a disc brake. Um, this, uh, this particular style is called, it's an asymmetrical lacing pattern. So um, if, you, if you look at the, uh, w what they would call the, like the trailing spoke, um, that would be this one. So it's going, you know, kind of pointing back at a counterclockwise direction. You've got the leading spokes that are going going forward as far as you know looking at it in terms of the, you know the way the wheel's going to turn the wheel's going to turn this way you're driving your gears this way so the, these uh, the trailing spoke he, spokes here are what's going to really support or they're you know as far as they're going to feel the brunt of that torque uh, so on a disc brake wheel if I just flip this around the forces are kind of basically the same. The wheel's going this direction, so the rim wants to keep turning, and you're holding, you know, basically if you were to try to grab this and stop it, it's kind of the same thing there. So the, the spoke is, as far as your, uh, that's gonna be the leading spoke, as far as direction of wheel rotation. But these, uh, this spoke here, is gonna feel the brunt of the, of the torque. Um, so what I like to do is have those spokes that are feeling the brunt of the torque are going to have the elbows out. Um, I feel like it splays everything out to give the most leverage, but then also you kind of have the addition of the, the shoulder of the flange here that that's um, supporting that spoke as well. You know, it's kind of the over the shoulder support there. Um, so we'll just kind of spin this around. And well, you can kind of look at it. So if we look at what the, the spokes on the inside are doing. The elbows in, heads out. They're going that direction, and it's opposite on this side. The, uh, the basically you got the elbow side out, and then on the outside, the, with the heads facing inwards, the spokes going that direction. So this would be called an asymmetrical lacing pattern. All right, so we got here is a front wheel with the disc brake. This is the wheel off my commuter bike. I built this about five years ago and still feels really good, nice and tensioned and straight and everything. But anyway, if you look at it in terms of from the uh, the disc brake side, you can see how the it's going to be traveling this direction, but as you cinch down on the brakes and try to stop that, the forces are going to be, yeah, this is going to be your main spoke that's supporting the forces. And if you look at, I've got on this, on the outside here, it's going the same direction. So the spokes on the inside are going the same direction, the spokes on the outside are going the same direction. And this type of lacing pattern here, they would call this a symmetrical or the mirror image style. Uh, as far as rim brake wheels, this is typically how I will uh, lace them as well. I'll lace the, uh, as far as instead of the disc brake rotor here, your, um, your gears, you know, be it a single speed, cassette, free will, whatever, 
on this side this this would be the exact same lacing pattern I would use all right we've got yet another example here uh, this is an older wheel I didn't build this wheel this one was just uh, off a bike that I acquired and thought it would be an interesting example but if you look here's this is for an old freewheel style so here's our drive side obviously it's a rim brake but you can see on the outer edge um, the outside or the elbow out spokes they're pointing forward the trailing spokes are on the inside and there, there's a lot of folks that build wheels in this particular configuration um, there's the the book that Jobs Brandt wrote uh, that uh, lots of guys you, you know even the owner of the shop I work at he likes to lace them like this and the theory here is that as you so as we're torquing on the hub this spoke here that's on the inside that's going to straighten out and get tighter and as it straightens out so we've got here this spoke that as it gets tighter it's going to pull in it's going to pull these the elbow the outer spokes it's going to pull that inward somewhat so the theory is is that when you're in your lowest uh, or the biggest cog in the back and your derailleur super close to the spokes it pulls that in gives you a little extra clearance but um, I don't know in my mind the theory is that I like it the other way because the the spokes that are outwards are gonna give you the most support if it's really getting torqued on it just gives you the most stability and builds a stiffer wheel from a driving per perspective um, you know and then also this wheel is laced uh, asymmetrically as well so the the two sides are basically opposite of each other so the inside spokes are going two different directions the outside spokes are going two different directions uh, the grand scheme of things doesn't really matter especially on a rim brake wheel but I think it does matter on a disc brake wheel to build them asymmetrically on the rear wheel symmetrically on the front wheel just because for one I can, I'll share a, a page that uh, makes quite a bit of sense front of it but uh, that's basically what Shimano recommends across the board on everything from XTR to their basic lowest end disc brake wheel so interesting read uh, but anyway let's just get right back to our original wheel and uh, we'll get started all right so we got our wheel and what we're going to do th there's going to be two basic exercises here with this uh, practice wheel uh, the first one is going to be we're just going to disassemble the wheel um, you know we've got our location of each spoke there is color coded as far as in a you know the inside outside spokes as far as the elbows in elbows out and then we've got our left and right sides as well so it should be pretty easy to just as an aid to get that back together so you know, like I say I'm going to pull this wheel fully apart pull all the spokes out and then we're just going to start from uh, start from there uh, the second exercise is going to be a little more advanced I'm going to show how to do it I'm going to basically we'll pull that wheel apart again but I'm going to um, we'll pull all the spokes out and then when we re, um, rebuild the wheel we're going to do it in the way that a more of a production mechanic would do as far as based off speed which in my opinion is an actual easier way to build the wheel we're going to put all the spokes in and then I'll show you the technique I use to build the spoke uh, build the wheel from there in a, in a quick timely manner so yeah a couple other I don't know one last thing before we tear this one apart this one didn't have any kind of a decal or anything on the hub but one thing I like to do is if there is a logo or whatever and I don't know how well we can get this in focus but there's our valve stem hole over there we go see how that lines up with the logo it, you don't have to do this but it you know it's one of those things that doesn't doesn't take any longer to do it this way so uh, it's just kind of a makes the wheel look more professional for one so we've got our one other thing you know here's our valve stem we're looking at the logo here's our key spoke and it's just basically you, you definitely want to have I mean if you look if we go back to this group of four spokes you've got an opening here every every four spokes you're going to have this bigger opening and you want the valve stem to be within one of those openings that's basically just so you can get your 
your pump or your air chuck or whatever, you got the maximum amount of room to inflate. So that's actually an important thing. I, you know, that's something I see every now and then that um, uh, it's, it's done wrong. So uh, anyway, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, I'll start tearing this wheel down. <clears throat> All right, before we start uh, disassembling it here, the, obviously I've got a truing stand, which is a, a nice tool to have. You don't necessarily have to have a truing stand uh, to do, especially just to assemble a wheel. Um, we're not going to go in depth on this video on how to calculate spoke lengths or I'm going to take it to a point where I can show you a follow-up video as far as how to get the kind of the final tensioning and truing of the wheel. But um, anyway, tools that are good to have um, would be a decent spoke wrench. Um, you know, I've got the little park ones here, but over time I don't really I mean, I prefer something like this or the DT uh, spoke wrenches I use at work a lot or just definitely easier on the fingers. Um, so one thing, here's our, our valve hole. So I'll usually like to just, I'll start there. I mean, we're going to detension this wheel uh, first. So basically we're just going to, I'm going to turn each spoke a couple turns and we're just going to go all the way around the wheel here. So we got all these guys pretty loose. You know, it's loose enough to move, but I can, if I wanted to go through and just turn these by hand, I can pretty much do that. So I could just undo them by then. Uh, we're gonna speed up this process. Uh, one is like one of these little pigtail tools that, you know, it's just got a, it looks like a flathead screwdriver with a little, uh, a little point in the middle. So it engages into the spoke nipples and you can, you know, turn this thing real quick like so. Um, personally, I like to just make my own out of a little screw, a little uh, shank screwdriver bit that you would use in your, like a powered screwdriver or whatever. Um, up at the shop, I like, I did a review a little while back on the Milwaukee M12, which is, in my opinion, pretty well perfect torque-wise for doing these. I've got my little Dewalt impact driver here which is way way more way too much power for this but you know we're just taking these out so it's going to make super quick work of disassembling the wheel all right we'll check back in here just as soon as this as soon as i get it all uh torn down and so once you get it Past maybe half of the nipples out you can take it it's probably easier just to take it out of the truing stand and just down to my last few here you can just maybe easier just to do them by hand uh, you know a lot of guys that like to just really take their time and do it all by hand that's all fine and good um, but you know I do this repetitively quite a bit so I like to any chances I have to save my fingers and wrists from just repetitive movements that you know, I'll, I usually will always take it. All right, so we got everything out here. And, you know, again, we've got, I've got the uh, heads of all the spokes marked, so white in this case, but, um, you yeah, know, just what I'm gonna do is gonna take all these, uh, drop all these white ones out first. All right, so before we start putting this together, one thing I like to do is just to keep everything organized. I'll usually, if I think of it in terms, I usually always lay my hub down in terms of, you know, just left and right, like you're sitting on the bike and the spokes that are gonna go on the, on the left side will be on over here, the spokes will be on the right side will be over here. Normally when I'm building it all together, these aren't gonna be marked or anything other than they're just two different lengths. These will all be together, these will all be together, but in case of this tutorial or this little exercise, we've got those separated. We've got our nipples here. Some guys like to put spoke prep, like a wheelsmith spoke prep, something like that. Some guys like to just use grease or oil. Uh, some guys will use Loctite. Uh, personally, I like to use uh, linseed oil. Some guys will just dip the spokes in it, let it set up. Um, this is my method. I'll put them in a little container or something and then uh, I'll just pour a little bit of the 
linseed oil in there. You don't need a lot. Just enough to get them juiced up. And uh, I generally I like to, you know, let the linseed oil get inside of the nipples. A lot of times I'll just set this aside while I'm doing everything else, you know, prepping, counting out my nipples, and then I'll get everything laid out and just, just to make sure these get coated inside and out. Um, and usually from there I just have a something where it's not the whatever the counter if you don't want linseed oil stuff on there I usually just pour them out something just like so a couple different tools this one's an easy to make homemade tool this version works well for deep deep dish rims you know from there you can thread your spoke right into your rim uh, all this is is a quick release skewer. You can see the threads on that end. You just take off the, I mean, these are the old metal type. You just take off the, the actual skewer part and then that leaves you with the hole. Makes it easy to hang on the wall. I've got one at the shop that I use. It's a lot shorter just for something, a short double wall rim like we're building here today. <clears throat> um, used to have one of the EVT tools that you know has the knurling here and then the little divot, but you know, those are somewhat expensive. These are pretty much free other than just grinding it up on the grinder. Another alternative I'll probably use to build this wheel is I usually like to use these. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight pick. I think you can get the four, sometimes set of four on these for like $3.99 or might have even got them for less than that. But kind of wedges on there and then these are nice because you can thread that onto the spoke and then when it, the spoke gets to a certain depth it actually just will eject itself off because it bottoms out to the tip there so these are really handy to get your uh, get everything threaded on and at a consistent depth all right so i kind of cobbled together this little little shuffle tray thing just put our nipples in there this will kind of get them Separated, make it easy to uh, get them loaded up. Get the most of them in there. Do a few here by hand. Again, we've got our uh, center, or where we want to line, line our valve stem up with. So that's basically the closest center point. We're going to call this zero, one, two, and then three. This is our blue key spoke. We're gonna start step one of what I would do on the, the basic beginner level method. I'm gonna, it's a pretty easy one to learn. I think it's the method most people learn. So, so every yellow spoke in a hole. All right, uh, so from here we can go one of two ways. We can just lace all these up to the, um, to the yellow marks on the rim. We're gonna take it a step further. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these, uh, the white spokes in here on this side since I'm already holding this hub in this direction. Okay. Now, how difficult this is to see, but if you look at the hub, so we've got, and you look at the hub and the rim, you can see that uh, our, as far as where our key spoke is, the spoke's going to be you know, clocked back this way, so it's going to be going in the kind of the leading pointing counterclockwise, and then the white spoke or the white hole there is going to basically mirror it, but it's going to be just one click back or one uh, few degrees back. So if you look at the you know the corresponding white spoke to this yellow spoke, you can see it's just slightly behind in rotation. You know, so if we were to hold this at 12 o'clock. This one's sitting about 11.55, so uh, 
go back to our key spoke, which is this one. Load one of these guys up. Again, right here to the hole just next to the uh, our valve stem hole there. All right? So if you just look straight down, you can see which hole is the one that kind of follows this yellow one going the same direction. And we'll follow up with that one. Uh, from here on our next yellow spoke, which is one hole away here, it's going to be three holes. Of course, we've got our valve stem hole, but then you've got one, two, three holes. Fourth hole down is going to be where this spoke here goes. And then we've already got our We've got our next spoke after this one that's our white spoke. So this, I mean, it's really pretty easy other than uh, if these, if the holes aren't paint, you know, if these aren't marked, you basically just, you know, if we're going off the, the side here on the top, we're just going to count three holes from this leading spoke and You can kind of start to see the pattern here. Next spoken line here. It's going to be our. So, you know, just again, the yellow holes there, so the spokes on this side, there's three holes between. If we look at the, where the white one is, there's three holes between. This one included that's already got a spoke in it. to just do one side total first you know we can even if we want to speed this process up a little just grab the white then the yellow then the white then the yellow Got them all in. We're gonna do now is just spin this thing around, and we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, the inside spokes here on the uh, left side. Start off with just one. We kind of wanna, and this is the only you know really issue with doing uh, the spokes with this method is that we. You know, this this is going to be kind of slow going as far as this particular elbow's inside here. So, got it in. We're crossing this spoke. So, we've got one, under two, and then we're going to go over this third one. And then we're going to go in right here. Um, we know it's this one because we were crossing three sp spokes, and then this spoke that's on this side, we don't want to be right next to it, so we want to have a hole skipping between uh, the spokes that are on the same side together. So it's going to be this hole right here. So, you know, I don't know if that pattern there makes sense. Um, got our one green one. So if we count three holes, one, two, three, that's going to be the next position. Um, next hole, next position. And if we can get this kind of over that spoke. Got crossed one, two, this is our third cross. And we 
we've got spoke we just put in earlier one two three that's our fourth slot so super easy when it's painted like this it just gives you a super quick easy visual cue uh, so it's just something simple to uh, to do there so let's get these loaded in real quick and then uh, move into the last side here Now we're ready to do the uh, the red spokes there. So at this point, we can just drop these ones all straight in. It's going to be our easiest way here. Still got to kind of weasel it between the, the gaps. that down like so so these ones you know they're gonna basically we got these guys going this way so again you got they're already in place one two this is our third spoke just over under you know once you're positioning the spokes like this you want to be careful not to scrape the edge of the spoke there on the on the rim this threaded section on the end is super sharp it all just gouge up the decals or um, the, anodize, the anodization or just whichever. So we're just gonna <clears throat> basically you just go around and follow the next one. There's that open hole so it's pretty pretty simple. You can't really, I mean I guess it's possible to get one in the wrong spot but it'll become apparent pretty quick. Alright, so at this point we're ready to uh, start tensioning the wheel. Um, you know, if it's again your first wheel, you might just give it a quick look over, double check, make sure all the, the elbows out spokes are always passing over, 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 and then under. Just You can kind of just go through and make sure they're all the same. Both sides, make sure, you know, it's super easy. That's a common mistake is to forget to tuck, you know, the the under spoke, under, under, and then over, and then that spoke with the, with the head in, elbow out, you know, it's always gonna go over, over, and then under. So it's always good just to do a quick visual, make sure you're good there before you move on to the next step. Um, so you can fast forward to the tensioning and truing part. I'm gonna show method two um, right now. This is the method I typically use uh, to lace up the wheels <clears throat> when I'm building them up the shop. It's what I would consider more the production style method, which is gonna be a lot quicker. Uh, to me, it's more simple as well, but if you've got quite a few other things going on, it definitely takes less time to do this way. So anyways, just jump right into it. Again, we've got our uh, center or where we want to line, line our valve stem up with. So that's basically the closest center point. We're going to call this zero, one, two, and then three. This is our blue key spoke. Uh, so from there, we've got, uh, you can see this is the next available hole. If we're going to build this wheel in the asymmetric style, which is for the rear wheel with the disc brake. If it was a rim brake, I would build it as far as a symmetrical style and I would drop my spoke in here. Um, 
just because I, the, I want the two outside or the two elbows out to both be coming this direction here. Um, so anyway, asymmetrical. So we're going to go the position that's directly behind. So if you're looking at this like a, that's 12 o'clock noon, this would be 1155 position here. So anyway, at this point, uh, what I'm going to do is just feed the white spokes here, or we would do the spokes on the non-drive side or the left side. I'm going to just um, put these guys in. And I'm doing the, the bottom side first. The reason we're doing that is because if we were to do the top side first, we're having to work around all those spokes. So we got our white ones in. Now I'll go ahead and just follow up with the yellow. Whoop. Try not to get it in the hole down there. All right, so we got all that side done. The rest is pretty, pretty straightforward and simple. You know, really the only guesswork is figuring out your keyhole and then your. Uh, the, sp the spoke on the other side of the flange there. So just let your spokes lay all the, you know, flat basically like that. And then we're just gonna drop the hub in on this side. I'm gonna do the red ones first again, just so it's, you know, we kind of had to work around these, but it's not really a huge deal. And you know, in the case where these weren't painted so it's not you know super easy where you're just going every other spot there's only going to be one hole available on each one so and then we're not going to necessarily have these grouped into into fours we're just going to have them grouped into the the left side and the right side typically rear wheel the right side is going to be shorter so you would want to have them separated like that but as far as differentiating between on one particular side, the elbows in or out there, the spokes should be the same, same length there, so. All right, got all these loaded. So there's the uh, top of our uh, top of our hub again there. So usually I'll do at this point is just let this kind of lay down just like so. All right, so we got our hub here on our little makeshift jig so I can hopefully show this a little easier. But here's our, let's just start from scratch. We know that this is our key spoke. Um, got the little blue dot there on it and it's one of these yellow ones, but we didn't have these color coded or anything else and I had established that that's where my key spoke was going to be anyway when I put the spokes in initially. So go back to the uh, proximate center, which would be this one lined up with our logo on the hub. So we'll count this one as zero, one, two, three. So pretty well already verified that since we've already got the blue dot. It's got some blue coloring on there. So uh, from here, we need to have a spoke that's going to cross with this. It's our group of two spokes we're going to thread in. I usually will thread in two at one time, essentially, or hold two and then thread them in one right after the other. So basically three cross wheels. So we've got one, that's one spoke that's going to cross, two, and then this is number three. So basically you want to just kind of cross those over, you know, the inside spoke will go over the outside spoke, kind of form a little X, and then we're just going to thread it. This will be our yellow spoke, this will be a red, so we'll put those in the corresponding red and yellow holes there up top. Two spokes, got our rim, I marked the, uh, kind of put a little dummy valve and I've got some blue tape so we can see exactly where that corresponds to everything else. So this first hole just to the left, it's our yellow, yellow and red spokes. 
So key spoke, I always do it to where it's just to the left of the valve stem. And there's some rims out there, some of the vintage rims um, that you want, you would want to, they're opposite. So this spoke, the holes are either going to be in a line on the rim or this one, you know, these two holes may be outwards towards us a little closer to kind of match the, the flange on this side. In this case, they're, they're all even all the way around, but either which way, most modern rims, you're always, this is always a good starting position for your key spoke. So, uh, yeah, got that set up. Go ahead and put our nipples on. And we're ready to move into our second pair of spokes, which are gonna be on the non-drive side or the left side flange. I think there's a pretty good view to get a good visual um, on the spokes on the other side. So being asymmetric, this was that spoke we dropped in after we dropped our key spoke, and it's the one that's clocked slightly behind. So, you know, again, if this is straight up 12 o'clock, this one's going to be about at the 11.55 position. So that's going to be our spoke that kind of parallels or is clocked on the rim just, just beyond the, uh, our key spoke there and then again we've got crosswise we got one two and then this is our third spoke again we're going to go up over and under like so and then we can just uh, thread these here into the into the rim all right so usually I'll I'll have this just sitting on my lap at this point. It seems like it's a little easier to easier to do and see. But here's our two spokes, and then you can see kind of where they sit in relation to the other. We got our green and white. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop these guys in. Put our nipples on. You know, like I say, normally I'll just have it on my lap and my legs resting on the rim and then the gravity just lets this drop down. So, and typically what I'll do from here, I'll just roll along clockwise and let me zoom in here again, get another angle. All right, so grabbing our next two, I'll rotate this, this way a little, you get a good visual here, but there's our head in, elbow out, and then our elbow in, head out spokes. So the next available position is gonna be this guy here. Go ahead and rotate that up there, and then our next available elbow in spoke is gonna be this one. Again, just cross over under, and skip one hole on the rim, and just, uh, right through there like so. Here's just a matter of following the, uh, the, the pattern. The next two on the drive side here are gonna be this one and this one. Again, over under, feed our spokes through. And then just alternate back to the, the non-drive side. I'll go ahead and just finish this on my lap uh, like I would typically do it at the shop. And then we'll get into the tensioning and truing. So yeah, normally I'm just gonna hold the wheel just on my lap like so. And it, it really, you know, if you let the, after those first four, you just let the rim support the hub and just let it gravity hold it down, it makes it super easy to uh, just get your spokes and you're just, again, you're just following the, uh, following the pattern of the next two available spokes, you know, and then with these, the holes in the rim and then the holes in the hubs being color coded, which one goes where, this is maybe a nice way to do it, to kind of learn this method, but once you get it down and do a few, it's 
to me it's way quicker. We should have our uh, wheel all ready to go, ready to add some tension to it. You know, the spokes are obviously going to be a little loose depending on how tight you got them. But, um, you know, the main thing, you just you want them in place and everything. You know, again, you might make a quick visual, make sure everything's, uh, all the spokes are inside, you know, weaved inside each other correctly. <coughs> Um, you know, being that this is, wheel's been put together and pulled apart numerous times, this isn't something we would do here, but um, I, I've seen videos where guys start to tension it and then they'll, they'll actually step on it to get the, the spoke seated in or hit them with hammers or work a screwdriver in between there to get the spokes uh, set in, but usually what I'll do is just uh, push, them, push them in with my thumb there just so that leading edge has a nice you know there's no gap between the the, the edge of the flange and the spoke so um, you know good idea just to do that kind of work them in place you might bring it up to tension just a little before you do that it makes it a little bit easier but whichever method you do works just fine <clears throat> so one way to kind of get it started into the initial uh, tensioning phase sometimes you can look at you know that where this the threads stop on the spoke and then just tighten the nipple up to that point. Um, you know, that, that, whatever, that works well. And then from there, just with your spoke wrench, you know, tighten it, maybe go around and tighten each spoke two turns and kind of see where that gets you. Uh, you can use these little, the pigtail things, or you know, what I like to do is just with my little bit that I've made here, I can normally just hit these until uh, basically what it does is it's going to take that, it'll take the spoke all the way up to about, I don't know, maybe four millimeters till it hits the end of the, end of the uh, spoke nipple there. So usually if you just, uh, you know, again, start at your valve stem to give you a reference point. I'll just hit these until it basically ejects the bit off the nipple. Want to make sure you've got it engaged there nice and then you know, again I would pretty much tip, typically not use this tool I like that little Milwaukee M12 uh, cordless screwdriver thing that's not quite as not quite as fast and not quite as powerful uh, but it makes pretty quick work of it, you know, saves those repetitive motions from your wrists and fingers of just tightening the spokes. But again, that's going to be for more of a production production mechanic, you know, as, as far as uh, some guys just like to sit back with a cup of coffee and take a long time to you know, watch the Tour de France while they're working on their wheel and That's all, you know, that's fine as well. But, you know, if you're a production mechanic and you're looking for some ways to get this done quicker, this is definitely, uh, we'll get it done quicker. Okay, so, 
just getting to where when it's getting to the end of that end of this spoke right there I'm just these are just starting to get a little tighter so still a little loose a few of them there but for the most part we're we're within the ballpark now I mean keep in mind this rim was pretty jacked up um, so it's not going to be super straight but from here we can uh, take our calipers in and then start truing the wheel uh, I'm going to end the video at this point just because it has gotten so long-winded I'll put a link it's going to be up here in the kind of the right hand corner uh, that is going to be a little more instructional video on how to, to uh, do, do your wheel truing and such. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found the, this video helpful or interesting. Um, please feel free to comment and let me know what you think. See if it was helpful for you or if you've got some other tips that you may want to share. Um, anyway, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to subscribe. Going to have got a series of other wheel building uh, some tips on how to make tools um, how to calculate spoke length and then I'm gonna have one that's a little more depth as far as uh, tensioning and truing after a wheel build that will probably replace this one up here in the right hand corner so anyway thanks for watching see you guys next time